Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to talk about a new book today that I finished reading. Um, actually, I finished reading it a while back. It's Richard Preston's The Hot Zone. Of course, <laughs> Richard Preston's The Hot Zone is about the outbreak of the Ebola virus um, back in, I believe it was the 70s. Excuse me, it might have been the early 90s that we're talking about here. Um, excuse me, the 1980s. <laughs> I was uh, is somewhere in between, actually. So um, I wanted to read this book because I felt, obviously, it might be relevant to our experiences today um, with the coronavirus outbreak. And actually what i'm really interested in the the thing that interests me about pandemics and and uh topics of that around that area are um the it, it's the issue of rebuilding or the issue of um how societies get back on track because that's been kind of like playing on my mind lately um is you know, economies, um, the, the grieving process obviously is a, is a tremendous, uh, it's a tremendous issue. It's a huge issue that's going to have to take place this period of national mourning, but also how do you deal with like the economic, um, the, the, the economic blows that are being dealt? How do you deal with the, um, psychological? I mean, this, this pandemic, touches on every aspect of life it's it's a spiritual experience in a way too um it just psychological economic political spiritual is it touches on every aspect and i'm really interested in finding out from history and and past pandemics how societies have rebuilt um this book does not by the way offer that information instead this book is more of like a thriller i found <laughs> and it really talks about the the outbreak itself it sort of like relishes in the in the horrific details of um how this virus um transmits into the human body and the the havoc that it wreaks on the human body but in the process it also says a lot about um it it also it touches on the sort of lessons the hard lessons that we need to learn from that because as it so happens a lot of these um these viruses these really deadly viruses are caused by um actually man's disregard for the environment and his depletion of natural resources and his wiping out of entire ecosystems and so those um viruses that have been long held or dormant in these pristine untouched areas of nature are then brought to the front um as animals migrate out of deforested areas and um it just spreads that way and that's how we eventually come into contact with them uh with the with the with the animals and then with the viruses that they carry. So um, it's it's an interesting lesson. I think it's a fascinating topic because in a way, um, and not to, not to diminish the suffering and the pain of people who have lost um, loved ones and who are losing them every day to this pandemic um, or in this pandemic, but I feel that on a certain level, this is sort of like Mother Nature's uh, self-preservation method. It's like her way of taking a break from us. I was reading an article the other day about how um, the skies are clearer, air pollution is down, um, animals are coming out. I don't know if wherever you live, you've seen um, animals that we've never seen before just kind of out and about i saw the an owl the other day at a time in which it was very it's very unusual to see an owl and he was just up there in his perch uh, perched up on the on the tree and he was just hooting away and 
uh, cardinals are everywhere. And I know it's spring, but I, I do feel that there's this element of like nature is like sort of taking a breather, taking a break from, from us, from human, from humankind. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's kind of beautiful in a way. Um, again, not to diminish the death and the suffering that, that is going on right now, but I do think that there, that, I mean, it is true that the world is on pause right now and there are some good things that are coming out of that and there are some good things that are coming out of the experience so i'm very interested in that this book touches on it uh tangentially it doesn't really go into it i could probably find and read you the part where it talks about viruses and like what we can learn about them from an ecological um viewpoint um and it's, it's, it is interesting, but it's a small part of the book. Really, the book is kind of um, dealing with the horrors of outbreak. And that, for, for, for what that's worth, it, it's, a, it's a good book. Um, it reads kind of like a thriller book. It reads like a um, sort of like a page turner thriller. Um, let me see if I can find that piece. I know it was at the very end of the book. I'm flipping through the book right now to see if I can find that, um, that part where he talks about the ecological sort of ramifications. Um, so this might be it. I think this might be it. The emergence of AIDS, Ebola, and any number of other rainforest agents appears to be a natural consequence of the ruin of the tropical biosphere. The emerging viruses are, surfing, are surfacing from ecologically damaged parts of the earth. Many of them come from the tattered edges of tropical rainforests, or they come from tropical savanna that is, that is being settled rapidly by people. The tropical rainforests are the deep reservoirs of life on the planet, containing most of the world's plant and animal species. The rainforests are also its largest reservoirs of viruses, since all living things carry viruses. When viruses come out of an ecosystem, they tend to spread in waves through, human, through the human population, like echoes from the dying biosphere. Here are the names of some emerging viruses, and he gives names like Lhasa, uh, Rift Valley, um, and he goes on with a bunch of, of virus names, monkeypox. Um, these rabies-like strains, uh, the rabies-like strains, Macola, okay, so he keeps, uh, keeps going on. Then there is HIV, which is very much an emerging virus because its penetration of the human species is increasing rapidly with no end in sight. In a sense, the earth is mounting an immune response against the human species. It is beginning to react to the human parasite, the flooding infection of people, the dead spots of concrete all over the planet, the cancerous rots out, rot outs in Europe, Japan, and the United States, thick with replicating primates, the colonies enlarging and spreading and threatening to shock the biosphere with mass extinctions. Perhaps the biosphere does not like the idea of five billion humans, or it could also be said that the extreme amplification of the human race, which has occurred only in the past hundred years or so, has suddenly produced a very large quantity of meat, which is sitting everywhere in the biosphere and may not be able to defend itself against a life form that might want to consume it. Nature has interesting ways of balancing itself. The rainforest has its own defenses. The Earth's immune system, so to speak, has recognized the presence of the human species and is starting to kick in. The Earth is attempting to rid itself of an infection by the human parasite. Perhaps AIDS is the first step in a natural process of clearance. So 
it's it's colorful you can tell he there's this sort of like um horror-esque quality to it actually stephen king gave this uh book a review it says uh one of the most horrifying things i've ever read and it is horrifying but um there is a, a sort of i don't know like a bleak beauty to the to the um to the horror there there's this um there's this interesting sort of like fascination that you can tell that the author has with these like super deadly viruses and in a sense they are beautiful because they are um they're impartial they're um it's just a fact of nature and there there's something and they're they're old you know they've been here for um probably longer than we've been around um, so it's just an interesting topic. Um, again, this book doesn't quite go into what I was hoping it would go into, which is sort of like the rebuilding of society. Um, and those are things I'm interested in. Perhaps if you know of books like that, that maybe touch on those sort of like historical, uh, aspects of previous pandemics you can feel free to mention them in the in the comments below but i know richard preston is well known for his um his work with like uh writing about viruses and and pandemics and and things of that nature so uh this is probably his most famous book but he has another one out and actually one that came out just last year called um uh what is it called I forgot it. It has a green cover. Um, in the red, in the red zone, I think is the name of it. I purchased it actually, so I'm gonna. Uh, I have it around here somewhere. I'm gonna have to uh, do another video for the book haul video because I have a few new books I want to talk about. But yeah, Richard Preston. He he's well known for this. Uh, he's a good writer. Um, it's a fast read. Um, not so many lessons that you can learn from it, but it is interesting and it's definitely uh, timely right now. So, um, yeah, and also there's a movie, National Geographic put out a, um, a mini series. I think there's like six or seven episodes, maybe, maybe, maybe six um, episodes with, um, oh my God, who's the actress? Juliana, Juliana Mar. Margiles, I don't know how you pronounce her name, but I do know her. Um, Juliana, Juliana Margiles. Um, you have to look it up. It, it is. It's. It's also called the Hot Zone, and it was produced by um, National Geographic. So it's a. It's a. It's this book. Like that. That's. It's a dramatization of this. Of this material. So I do recommend it. Um, I think it's interesting but I tend to be a little bit more uh, leaning to like the horror aspect of, uh, of certain things. So it would speak to me. Um, other people might find it a little too um, gratuitous because it does get into some uh, very uh, disturbing details about how the virus interacts with the human body and what it does to the human body. So. Um, if that's not your thing, <laughs> stay away from this book. But other than that, I think it was a it was a great it was a great read. Very um, like I said, very scary and very timely. Um, so, hot zone, Richard Preston. Thanks.